finally came looking for God to do something supernatural. He said, I'm tired of the same old thing. I need you to do something different. When I leave this room, I don't want to go home and it be the same old thing. God, I need you to shake some stuff. I need you to break some stuff in breakthrough worship. I'm setting it up just so that I can get the glory. It's not to destroy you. It's not for your demise, but it's for your development. It's not punishment. He's pruning. Sometimes he's got to remove some dead stuff. He's got to get some stuff out of the way so you can blossom the way you deserve to be seen. Blossom for his glory. Because when he does it, it'll be a nobody but God could do a testimony. It wasn't my bank account. It wasn't my social status. It wasn't my popularity. They don't even like me. They talk about me on my job. But it was the favor of God on my life. And my obedience led to his glory being manifested in every avenue of my life. That's why I look so good. It's not because I'm a millionaire. He takes care of me. His word declares that he supplies all of my needs. Come on, church. According to his riches and glory, I wish I had a church that understood that when you are obedient, it puts you in position for the glory of God to be revealed in your say. I don't care what they say. I reverse every curse. Mm of every word that was spoken over every person in this room. Every word that was spoken that you would not succeed, that you would fail, that you would not go past your predecessors. I rebuke the devil now and I reverse the curse. You shall have everything that the Lord decreed you to have. You shall lack nothing. You shall prosper in all of your ways as you continue to acknowledge him. And you will see him directing your path. No weapons formed against you shall ever prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, I command the Holy Spirit, I arrest it now to condemn it. In the name of Jesus, you are who God says you are. Tell a young person right now. Matter of fact, go get up and hug a young person right now. And tell them you are who God says that you are. 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 Father, uh, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You are who God says that you are. I don't care what your lineage says. I don't care what the generations before you said. I don't care what the patterns are. You shall shift the trajectory of your legacy for your obedience because you are. as this redhead shepherd boy, the reason they had him in the back was because they questioned theologians say, they questioned his legitimacy. <laughs> is he even a son? Come on. Is, is that even his boy? Because he in the back. He all red and different. Look at him. He don't look nothing like his brothers. Look at the handsome one. I bet you he gonna be the king. You know how they do. They size you up and they say, yeah, that one, that one gonna be something. And they see another one be like, mm, we don't gonna have to watch this one. We gotta be careful, mature believers, of the seeds we sow. Because guess what, it takes darkness also for plants to produce. Not just the sunlight, but the darkness also. We gotta be careful about the darkness we allow. Too much darkness will take the seed. We gotta know how to bring forth constructive criticism. Not just criticism. Come on now. Constructive criticism builds up construction, root words. Y'all know I like words. Building. We, we gotta build them up. Nobody has seen. There's been people that have tried to hide you. They try to illuminate everything that's wrong about you so much that it clouds the judgment of what's right about you. Tell somebody I don't look like what I've been through. Ha, ah, you may have knew me back then, but I'm a different person. Oh, because one day he saved my life. One day he entered my heart and he changed my mind. He broke my spirit in such a way that I had to say yes to him. Victory 
be as yours if you want it, but it's predicated on your willingness to obey. You gotta get out of yourself. You gotta do some things you've never done to get some things you've never had. There's a certain level of his glory that he wants to give you access to. Yes, But will your posture be anxious? Uh, emotions. In the dark. Didn't mind glowing in the field. <laughs> Didn't mind serving in the back where nobody could see him. That's why when Saul came to Jesse's house, the oil did not fall on the most handsome son. The oil would not pour on the most brilliant son. The oil didn't fall on the most talented son, but the oil poured on the one who wasn't afraid. We've often been so discouraged by our temporary dispositions, that we lose sight or lose hope on the promises that God already has prepared. When we get discouraged, oftentimes the light we see grows dim and our hope gets weary and our faith can become a moving target for the enemy. Yes. Don't you know that that's part of his agenda? Because he knows if he can distract you with your finances, if he can distract you with what's not right, if he can distract you with ailments in your body, with triggers, with emotions, then he knows he can get you to stop glowing from the inside out. Yeah. What is faith? And I'm closing. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence Things we can't physically see. Faith is the tangible, intangible. It sounds oxymoronic, right? <laughs> that comes <laughs> right. It is, it is the proof of what we cannot physically see. Yes. It is what is most essential in our Christian belief. Because the word of the Lord declares that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is. The word of the Lord declares that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. This assures me that you can roll on the floor like I said, y'all. You can, you can lay hands, you can shout, you can speak in tongues. But if you don't believe that what God has for you is for you, I speak to the, the believer that's wrestling Hallelujah. with that level of maturity. But when you know his track record, when you know that he's never failed, when you know that he'll be Jehovah Jireh, he'll make a way out of no way. He'll put rivers in the desert. He'll literally put rivers in the desert. That's what he did for the Israelites. He literally split the sea. I don't care what it is you need to cross over come to remind you who he is, the supplier of all your needs according to his riches and glory. When I'm sick, I can declare, because I know him, that by his stripes, I'm healed. When my haters take over me, I can call him on his word and say, God, you said that you will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And guess what? Even though he said he would prepare the table, he didn't say your enemies would have a seat. Tell somebody if God said it, so shall it be. Light is the main source for all living organisms. Have you planted seeds? I know you have. I know you've been planting them. That's why you're getting frustrated because you planted seeds and you're saying, God, when are you going to manifest yourself? They go in the dark, you know. But they need light to live. We talked about light, light versus darkness when we're planting seeds. They need darkness, but without light, they can't survive. Grass needs light to grow. Light is important to have for our vision, our visibility. A lamp unto our feet, a light unto our hearts. That's both. That's directional and instructional. <laughs> In John 8 and 12, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Matthew 5 and 14, he says, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, what he came to earth to do, the power that he has is now in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It takes courage, though, 
to be the light. That's why I had to dare you to go in the dark. Because it takes courage, it takes boldness. My little brothers and sisters, we, we need to be courageous in this season. <laughs> and it's time for us mature believers to lead by example yes. so that they understand a true living concept that God has not given us the spirit of fear, yes. but he's given us power, power to trample on serpents, power to go into the enemy's camp and revoke back everything that the devil thought he stole from us. Power to overcome generational curses. Power to break sickness in every lineage. Power. But it takes courage. I triple dog dare you to glow in the dark. Listen, I don't want it to take 400 years for you to understand that sometimes being in chains, it feels like there's no escape. In the story of Moses, the book of Exodus, it's called the Exodus, what we read talking about the Israelites coming out of Egypt. They thought after slavery, y'all, they was going to be released onto the mountaintop. But the Lord says that when he released them, he released them into the wilderness. And when he released them into the wilderness, he released them into the wilderness to worship. So God, you mean to tell me after being in chains, after feeling like I'm so stuck, I can't survive. You're going to release me into a place where I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn. I have nothing to rely on but you. When your miracle finds you, will it find you in worship? Even if he releases the miracle in the wilderness. Will it find you in the presence of God? Will it find you in your emotions? Moses picked up his staff, he raised his hand, and God performed a miracle. Because that's the kind of God we serve. He's a miracle working God. He can do exceedingly, abundantly above everything we could ever ask or think. I don't care how your situation looks. I don't care how it may seem as you continue to glow in the dark. And I don't care how dark and desolate out your situation looks. He'll work a miracle. Right in the middle of the dark. And he'll use you to do it. <laughs> oh, somebody throw your hands up and say, use me, Lord. Ah, use me, Lord, for your glory. For your service. Show yourself in a mighty way. It's not always easy to stay focused. Opportunities to be challenged should not be waited for anymore. Seize every opportunity the Lord gives you. When he challenges you to be bold enough to stand up and do what's right, even when it's not popular, glow in the dark. When he challenges you to be obedient, even when it's not comfortable, glow in the dark. When he challenges you to walk hand in hand with him, when you can't see, you can't trace it, and figure out what it's doing, when it feels like all hell is breaking loose in your life and you're doing everything you know how to do right. If you trust God in the process, for 12 people who will receive this prophetically, he's going to make a way out of nowhere. He's going to split the sea. He's going to cause you to walk on dry land. <laughs> And when your enemies are foolish enough to pursue you and try to look for you, he'll make you perfectly established. Spirit, establish me, God. Settle me. His word says, after you've suffered a little while, then I'll make you perfectly established. I prophesy to you that you will see the light at the mountain top. But I challenge you, I triple dog dare you to glow in the dark. Do what he's called you to do. Don't get so focused on your talent, on your job, on your title, that you lose sight of your assignment. This level of obedience to your assignment is securing your future. And it's not just setting you up, but if you receive this, it's setting up your whole lineage, your generations, generations. 
will prosper. Abundance shall be your new last name. All because of miracles, signs, and wonders. Follow them that believe. That means that as long as you stand still and keep doing what God has called you to do, the word declares the blessings of the Lord. Make it rich and added no sorrow. Not only that, it says, I commanded a blessing that cannot be reversed. That means as you continue to stay on your assignment, I'm overtaking you with blessings. They're chasing you down. As long as you're in the right place, there's blessings running into you from the north, from the south. I wish somebody in this room would put a deposit on your miracle. I don't know what it is you need from God. Ah, I feel you, Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is you need from God. But I dare you to put a deposit on what you need. Put a deposit on what it is you need. Bless him in advance. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in this room. As you continue to bless him and magnify him in advance. Oh, the Lord says it's already worked out. For your faithfulness. Oh, I'm going to reward you. He says, I'll open the windows of heaven. And I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have a room enough to receive. I open multiple windows to pour out one blessing. That means the blessing is going to be so big, it's going to blow the minds of not just you, but everybody connected to you. And they'll have no other choice but to say, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. And to God be the glory for all the things that he's done.
is too big for you. Release it to me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands as high as you can. You will be free today. I reverse the curse of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Say that the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, you are defeated. Depression cannot live in this body. Ah, spirit of anxiety cannot live in this mind. I speak peace right now. In the name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord be your strength. In your weakness hour when you feel you can't do it, woman of God, the spirit of the Lord shall strengthen you like never before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.